What's up, Packer fans? Happy Saturday. Welcome into the Pack-A-Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. You can follow the podcast at Pack-A-Day podcast. Today, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about Robert Tunyon. I'll talk a little bit about the tight end room as a group as well, but more specifically, Tunyon and his potential return for week one of the regular season. Um, this is something that caught me a little bit by surprise, but apparently probably should not have more on that in just a second. But uh, how this sort of uh, came to fruition this week is David Lombardi uh, posted a video from Robert Tunyon at tight end uh, training. I think, what do they call that? TEU or tight end university, etc. Um, and basically he was running off to the side, but tweeted that he's expected to be ready for the 2022 season opener or the 2022 season opener. So that, you know, slightly caught me by surprise, but my initial reaction was like, okay, you know, that's, you know, within the realm of possibility, but let's temper expectations a little bit. You know, I have to remember that Tunyon injured his ACL, tore his ACL in week eight against the Cardinals last season. And while he was off running to the side at OTAs in mini camps, and we saw him again running at TEU, uh, there, you know, you still don't know, right? You just, it, you can't take that as anything that all of a sudden he's going to be ready to return and actually play in football games. But then uh, there were reports, or at least, you know, some of these stories pointed to, to a Bill Huber article where he reported back in March that Tunyon actually suffered an ACL tear, a clean ACL tear, uh, that it was a very clean tear, that there was nothing, you know, I'm not a doctor here, obviously, uh, but nothing messy about it. There was no MC. It was just a very clean ACL tear, right? And the bigger piece here is that both sides, meaning the Packers and Tunyon's camp, were confident that he'd be back for the season opener and potentially even the start of training camp. And that was back in March. So, uh, you know, first of all, shame on me for not uh, seeing that sooner and, you know, probably talking about that sooner because this seems like a potential pretty big deal. And yes, we, I talked about Robert Tunyon on a couple different occasions this week, so I don't need to go into full, huge detail on exactly what he has the ability to bring to this team. And yes, his start of last season wasn't exactly on par with what he was doing in 2020. Uh, but for an offense that loses weapons like you know MBS, like Devontae Adams, uh, this has the ability and the potential to be a huge return. And this is a weapon in the middle of the field that Aaron Rodgers is not going to hesitate to use. He's going to have trust and faith in Tunyon. He is a better blocker than he gets credit for. He is a very big red zone threat, which Green Bay is definitely going to need, especially with the absence of Devontae Adams. So yes, this has the ability to be a big return for Green Bay. If they can get him sooner rather than later, that just makes it all that much better. They're clearly going to get him back at some point, but if he's ready for week one and he's almost, you know, at least in the conversation as returning for the start of training camp, that is huge for the Packers. Now, the first thing I will still state here is I think it's good to be optimistic at this point, but I still think we should probably be cautiously optimistic about the entire situation. ACLs are all very finicky, even if it is a clean ACL tear. So, you know, you have to sort of take it one day at a time. You have to see how he responds to everything. It's one thing to be doing some of the drills off to the side or, you know, just sort of like warm ups and testing and things off to the side. It's another to be actually doing football activities and playing in a game. Clearly, everything is trending in the right direction for Tunyon, but we'll see like once he actually gets taken off the injured list and is actually practicing, how does he respond? Can he string together practices? And is it going to feel like he can actually start the season and play the season? And while I think all of us are a little bit jaded, uh, you know, and just, um, you know, the freshest ACL injury in memory in our minds is still David Bakhtiari's. Bakhtiari's injury return is still the exception to the rule. And, you know, a lot of players have been making quicker and quicker returns from ACLs and looking better once they've made those returns. Josiah DeGuara was ready to go uh, pretty much, I think, at the start of last season. So, you know, you can get these players that are returning from ACLs and looking pretty good by the time they get back on the field. But this would still be huge, great news for the Packers if he was, in fact, able to make it back. I would still say, let's just be cautiously optimistic at this point. I think the next question that this brings up is, should Green Bay be bringing him back this early? Even if he is ready to go and ready to practice, you know, do you want to be a bit more cautious with him knowing that, as I've stated before, you know, this, this Packers season is not going to be won or lost, certainly in the first handful of weeks. I don't even think in the regular season. To me, the, the Packers season will be decided in the playoffs. Do you want to give him just extra time and make sure that he's ready to go? And if that means a couple extra months or that means he's not, you know, playing in September, does that really matter all that much? And 
obviously here, if he's able to play and he's medically cleared, you know, you want to get him out on the field and let him go. Uh, but I do still think that there is some potential wisdom in Green Bay, just being very, very careful and just saying, you know what, let's let's not rush anything. If there's any question, if there's any hesitation, if there's anything where he's not 100%, let's just push pause. Let's let him keep working out on the side and we'll get him back when he is 100, 100, 100% ready to go uh, with that injury. So, you know, I, I'm not... You know, I'm not saying that he shouldn't be able to go week one. I'm not saying that he shouldn't be able to practice in training camp if he's ready to go. I'm just saying that if I were the Packers, I would be as cautious as humanly possible with all of these ACL injuries and trying to get players back for when you actually need them uh, to compete, which is probably come playoff time. And clearly I'm not stating here as well that, well, just hold Tunyon and Kylan Hill and Elton Jenkins and David Bakhtiari out until, you know, the wild card week or the divisional round or whatever Green Bay's playing their first playoff game. You want to get them out on the field. You want to get them practicing. All I'm saying is that I think Green Bay should be as cautious as possible with these players. I'm sure they will be. They have been very cautious with their, you know, players, especially players returning from ACLs in the past. So I don't think they're going to rush these players, uh, but just, you know, kind of wanted to go over it nonetheless and just say, well, we'll see. And again, that's why I say like press the pause button and let's just see what happens because I know Green Bay will be cautious with how they return all of these injured players from Kylan to Tunyon to Bakhtiari uh, to Elton, etc. So we will see. But again, I, I know Green Bay is going to be cautious in this situation. The next question I think this brings up is how does this affect the tight end calculus? And what I mean by that is there's a lot of tight ends on this roster, at least I would say five tight ends on this roster that are 53-man roster type players, right? You've got Tyler Davis, you've got Dominique Daphne, you've got Josiah DeGuara, you've got Mercedes Lewis, and you've got Robert Tunyon. All of those, if they made a 53-man roster this season, would not be surprising. All of them have been on a 53-man roster as recently as last year, as the end of last year. So uh, the, the calculus could potentially change a little bit here. If Tunyon was expected to be not ready to start the season and started the season on the pup list, well then in that situation, you could potentially keep the other four, let Tunyon you know, sort of rest and then come back when he's ready, and then probably other injuries either to the tight ends or to other positions on the roster probably eventually just clears the space easily for Tunyon, right? But in this scenario, uh, you don't have that luxury. Now, the luxury is getting them back week one, which is huge, but you may not be able to keep all of those tight ends. And what is also interesting here that I had not noticed is that uh, according to a couple people on the Packers beat, um, that Josiah DeGuara was actually practicing some with the twos while Dominique Daphne was getting time with the ones. Now, I did clearly see DeGuara get time with the ones as well, and I did clearly see Daphne get time with the twos as well, uh, but it it's at least noted or noteworthy that there were times where Daphne was with the ones and DeGuara was with the twos. If anything, to me, this would be more of a message to DeGuara. I would be very, very surprised and shocked if Josiah DeGuara did not make the team in 2022. I don't know that he's a lock, but I think he's a very sure bet to make the team. Um, but now, if all of a sudden Tunyon's back, you know Mercedes Lewis isn't going anywhere you know, now you probably have two spots between Tyler Davis, Josiah DeGuara, and Dominique Daphne. In that case, again, I think Daphne, or excuse me, I think DeGuara has a really good leg up on any of the spots. And then if it's between Tyler Davis and Daphne, I would put Tyler Davis uh, well ahead of Daphne. So it just gets very interesting. And you could potentially keep five, but then that starts messing with the calculus of other position groups, like potentially wide receiver. Are you able to keep as many wide receivers if you'd like, if now you're trying to keep four to five tight ends? You know, it could affect running, but it could affect a variety of different position groups. So that is also going to be worth keeping an eye on. Now, don't want to say that Tunyon coming back is a bad thing. Clearly it is not, but it just could start affecting some of those roster decisions, specifically tight end, but it could have a trickle over effect into other position groups as well. Next is how does this sort of effect is the wrong word, but like, how does this put a timeline on Kylan Hill's return? Because if you remember, Kylan Hill and Robert Tunyon were both injured in the same game, the same week against the Arizona Cardinals in week eight. So could this mean that Kylan Hill is also ready to go week one? It could, if, if Tunyon is ready to go week one. They both had the same injury the same week. But as mentioned, Robert Tunyon had the clean ACL tear. We don't know how severe Kylan's was. It could have been a lot worse ACL tear. There's always could be complications, as we've seen with David Bakhtiari. But the other thing to remember here, too, is A, Kylan's a different athlete in a different position group. 
Robert's game is not based on quick cuts and doing a bunch of stuff in and out of breaks, right? Kylan's is. His ACL injury could affect how he plays the game and how he runs much more than it could with Robert Tunyon. Tunyon could come back and play his, you know, pretty close to his level of football, even if he doesn't have the same agility that he had pre-ACL injury. Kylan, his game is very much predicated on his agility. And if he's not 100%, it could take him longer. Part two of that is Robert Tunyon is much more integral to the Packers and their offense and what they're going to do this season than Kylan Hill is, meaning that if Kylan, you know, if they want to take a little bit more time with Kylan so that they can sort of stash him on the pup list for those first handful of weeks until there's roster space available, that could behoove the Packers more. So they may be willing to bring Tunyon back a little bit earlier, or they may be willing a little bit more to say, hey, Kylan, we're just going to have you wait a little bit longer so we can get you on the pup list, and then we'll bring you back later in the season. I'm not saying that's what will happen, but those are all the things that sort of go into those decisions. So just because Tunyon's back potentially week one or in training camp doesn't necessarily mean that the same thing will happen to Kylan for a variety of reasons, in severeness of injury, you know, how they perform as athletes. And then again, just some of the roster gymnastics that the Packers have to go through with those decisions as well. All of that could play a part in that decision-making. And then last but not least, even if Robert Tunyon is back week one, which again would be huge, great news, is he the same Robert Tunyon? And I, I talk about this all the time, but we, we sort of get clouded in our like in Madden, right? Like if you have a player who's injured and then they come back and they play, like if they were an 88 overall and they come back, they're still an 88 overall, right? There's no difference when they come back from injury. Well, that's not how it works in real life. If, you know, and this goes for the injured list as well. Like we can see a player that like, all right, they're, they're questionable to play this week with some sort of ankle injury. And then on game day, we get the inactives and like, oh, so-and-so is actually playing in the game. They were questionable. That's huge. And that sounds great. But the question is how much is that not practicing and how much is that ankle injury actually affecting them in the game? To use the Madden reference, maybe they're an 88 overall, but maybe now due to the ankle injury and not practicing all week, maybe in this game, they're actually going to be a 70 overall. So maybe you would still like to have that 70 overall, but they're maybe not the same player that they were if they were 100% healthy. You know, the same thing goes for Tunyon here. You know, we saw what Tunyon was in 2020. We saw flashes in 2021, but coming off of an ACL injury, how close do we to, you know, the 2020 version is Robert Tunyon now coming off a torn ACL and coming off some time off. So even though he may be back week one, and again, we don't know hundred percent for sure, but if that is the case, you know, how close is he to the 2020 version, which was just such a really great player for this Packers offense. So even if he's back, and everything looks great. We're still going to have to sort of wait and see to see what type of player he is coming off that ACL injury. Because as we've seen in the past with multiple players, a lot of times it's year two coming off your ACL that you really look back to normal. So even though he's back, doesn't mean he's the same player that he was prior to the injury. Overall, this is fantastic news. I'm super excited about it. I would love to see Robert Tunyon get back in a green and gold jersey sooner rather than later, as, soon, as long as you're being cautious with it and it's not going to affect him long term or affect him for the end of the season when you really need him. But great news on the Tunyon front, great news on the injury front. And hopefully all of these ACL players, whether it's Kylan, Elton, Tunyon, Bakhtiari, hopefully all of them can get back playing close to 100% sooner rather than later with no setbacks, no other injuries. And let's just turn the ACL injury off in uh, in uh, NFL football moving forward, actually in all sports. Just let's Let's get rid of all ACL injuries. If I were running for office, that would be my platform. We are getting rid of ACL injuries from here on out. That does it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me. I always appreciate it. I'll be right back here tomorrow with an all new episode, but until next time, and as always, go Pack Go.